most influential books ever written. A sacred text that over a billion people live by. It's a rule book about how to live one's life. And yet it holds many mysteries. It has the ability to provoke many meanings. You have clearly texts in which God talks about peace and mercy, etc. The Quran. Muslims believe that the Quran is something that was revealed by God directly to the Prophet of Islam. It's not merely uh, what God inspired his prophet to say, or say a history of, of some important event. It is actually God's own message to the world. Quran translates from Arabic as the recitation. The words are intended to be spoken aloud. In doing so, Muslims believe they communicate directly with God. The Quran, in preserving God's speech, becomes essentially a part of God. And as such, the text itself, the physical words, the, the pages, and, and the book itself has this intrinsic sanctity, this intrinsic holiness to it. Leafing through the text, one can instantly see similarities between the Quran and Jewish and Christian scripture. Each speaks of one eternal and omnipotent deity, and they each tell some of the same stories. But the Quran is also a book immersed in mystery. Its verses, considered to be some of the most beautiful Arabic ever written, are a labyrinth of language, more poetry than prose and its layout defies easy understanding. Unlike the Bible, the Quran doesn't follow a chronological narrative. Its 114 chapters, or surahs, are organized mostly according to length, with the longest at the beginning and the shortest at the end. Muslims don't regard the Quran as a story or a history. They believe it to be God's message to his created people and his guide to steer adherents along the right path. It is this clarity and authenticity that Islam claims distinguishes the Quran from the Christian and Jewish scriptures. Muhammad proclaimed that the message he received from God was the same message that was taught by Moses and Jesus. But according to Islam, when the revelations that became the basis of Judaic and Christian religions were written down in the Old and New Testaments, parts of them were corrupted. Muslims believe that the original revelation to Moses and Jesus came to be distorted over time. So that what we have in, if you will, the Old Testament and the New Testament is in fact both the original revelation and distortions. That is, changes that occurred because of historical, religious, and political conditions of the time. There is among them a section who distort the book with their tongues so that you would think it is part of the book, but it is no part of the book. And that say, that is from God, but it is not from God. It is they who tell a lie against God, and they know it. Chapter 3, verse 78. The Quran claims to confirm, on the one hand, the scriptures that came before very emphatically, and on the other hand, it claims to correct certain aspects or certain ideas in the Hebrew and the Christian scriptures. Muslims believe the Quran rectifies the mistakes in those scriptures, including clarifying some of the fundamental teachings of those faiths. For example, the Christian understanding of the figure of Christ. The Quran affirms that Jesus was a prophet, that he was born to a virgin, and that he performed miracles like curing blindness and leprosy. However, the Quran denies that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. The Quran also disputes the biblical account of the crucifixion, asserting that Jesus did not die on the cross, but was lifted up to heaven by God, and his would-be executioners mistakenly crucified another man who bore a likeness to Jesus. They neither killed him nor crucified him, but it so appeared unto them. They did not kill him for certain. Rather, God raised him unto him. Chapter 4, verse 157. The Christian notion.
notion that Jesus died to atone for the sins of humanity is a concept at odds with the Quran's doctrine that all souls are responsible for their own actions. The death and resurrection is an act of salvation. It doesn't work within Islam. You can't have uh, this idea of somebody redeeming the sins of somebody else. Muslims believe that it was because of distortions in the Bible that it was necessary for God to reveal his word one final time. In Islam, the Quran, as handed down to Muhammad and then preserved by Uthman, is believed to be the only true divine revelation. The Quran is seen as the final, complete, uncorrupted revelation, and Muhammad is seen as the last or final prophet of God. A powerful message, but not a new one. Muhammad made it clear that the Quran was the very same revelation that had been handed down to the Jews and to the Christians centuries earlier, a message about God's guidance for humankind. And now the revelation was being given to the Arabs for the first time and in their own language. The Prophet never said that I brought a new religion for you. The Prophet simply said, I am a messenger bringing the same message which has been brought to you by dozens and dozens of these extraordinary figures in our mutual history. Over and over again the Quran says, do not forget what happened to Abraham when, and then it'll tell a story about Abraham. Do not forget what happened to Joseph, and then it will tell a story of Joseph. And the interesting thing about it is that these stories are presented in sort of a Reader's Digest version. They're sort of summaries of these great stories. According to Muslims, one of the most remarkable aspects of the Quran is that Muhammad could memorize the revelations as they came to him and then recite them verbatim to his followers. There was a Kufic script, an early form of written Arabic in existence at the time, but few knew how to read or write it, and Muhammad was no exception. The belief within Islam is that Muhammad was illiterate. Um, what that underscores then, of course, is on the one hand, the fact that he wouldn't have written these revelations himself. Uh, on the other hand, the question is, well, how were they preserved? Muhammad's small band of followers promptly committed to memory each new revelation they heard, adding verse after verse to the collection already in their heads. Given the oral transmission of many cultures at the time, such feats of memory are unsurprising. The societies that we are talking about are oral cultures. So in, in a sense, the oral culture in which Muhammad lived allowed people to listen in something for one time or even two times and have the ability to memorize that and be able to recite it verbatim. As the catalog of revelations grew, Muhammad continued to preach on the streets of Mecca gradually gathering a group of converts around him. His followers came to be known as Muslims, meaning those who submit to God. Muhammad's message appealed especially to the town's poor and underprivileged, who heard their own lives echoed in the verses pleas for social justice, that slaves should be freed, and that the rich and powerful should give charity to the needy. Some converts to the Quran were entranced by the sheer beauty of the language of the work itself, which they saw as so perfect it had to be the work of God. When Muslims uh, are asked, well, all right, what proof have you got that uh, this is a, a divine revelation? Uh, Muslims will answer, and they have answered this over a thousand years, the proof is the Quran itself. That is the miracle, that an illiterate man in the middle of nowhere suddenly produces this magnificent, powerful document. The Quraysh and the majority of Meccans showed scant tolerance for the several dozen followers of Muhammad. The Muslims were persecuted. Some were beaten in the streets. Others were tortured. For nine years, the new believers endured the abuse, never wavering from their conviction that there was no God but God. Medina, the Prophet continued to offer revelations to his followers, but the nature of these verses was noticeably different. 
according to Muslim historians, they began to reflect Muhammad's status as a leader and added a new element to the overall canon, transforming it into a practical guide to creating and administering society. The revelations traditionally associated with the Medina period laid the foundations of Islamic law. They included rules covering most aspects of life, from the prohibition of alcohol to the permission to mothers to breastfeed their babies for up to two years. The verses provided guidelines for inheritance and legacies, gave new rights to dispossessed persons such as orphans and slaves, and set new rules elevating the position of women in society.